welcome back to the Elise DeLucci Show. We're in my bedroom today. Can you imagine that? Episode 39. And you know why we're in my bedroom? Because my kids are in the living room and in the kitchen doing school. Just so you know where we're at with this thing. Okay? Anyway, hope you're well. How are you doing? We have a giant snowstorm here in New York. It's actually kind of nice. You know, I like when it snows in the winter. There's nothing worse, right, than just having a winter without snow, like a balmy winter. To me, I, you know, I love the snow. Anyway, you know what I don't love? I don't love doing my podcast from my bed with that, that covered in a faux fur leopard blanket that, that has, you know, juice stains on it. Because, you know, God forbid anybody slept in their bed alone through the night. Uh-uh, Mom. <laughs> Last night they were like, Mommy, we, we're having nightmares. Can we come in the bed? And I'm just like, fine. You know, and I have one of these adjustable beds. I think I talked about it before. I have a king size bed, a split king adjustable bed. So there's a big crack in the middle, you know? It's because, you know, if I ever have another husband, I need to make sure that I, I, I'm guaranteed my space on my side of the bed. But, um, you know, so they come in the bed last night, and because there's the crack in the middle, they feel that they're, they're not like really next to me. So they roll into the crack and then roll onto my side of the, the, the mattress. You know, and then one gets up to go get juice, and next thing I know, there's cranberry juice on the on the, the faux fur blanket, and I'm just like, my God, my God, it's just never ending. And the only reason why I have a faux fur blanket on top of my duvet is because I have a white duvet cover, and it has pen marks on it, because another time, you know, when I didn't have a cover on the duvet cover, the cover on the cover, you know, people thought, you know, I don't know, there was a free-for-all, or all, a free-for-all here. You just, you just can't win. Anyway... Fact of the day, a hot dog stand outside Central Park Zoo. That Guess how much they pay for their space. You know, so obviously if you're in New York, you need to have, you, you know, if you want to set up shop and sell some bangle bracelets down on Broadway, you got to pay for the space. So a hot dog stand's paying for their space outside Central Park. Their location, I'll give you a hint, it's on 5th Avenue and 62nd Street. So right by Bergdorf Goodman, right by the Apple Store, right by the Plaza, the former FAO Schwartz, they pay $289,000 a year. $289,000 a year to rent a space, to rent a space on the street for their hot dog cart. That's a lot more money than some houses in this country, okay? And then I started thinking, how many square feet does a hot dog cart take up? I mean, how, how many? I, I don't know. Is it is it 10? I mean, you know, it's not really a square. It's kind of more like a rectangle. Is it, what, 10 feet? 10? I mean, Really? I mean, that's a lot of money. So then I'm wondering, how much did how much is this guy making? The guy who the guy whose name who rents this space, it's the most expensive hot dog space rental in Manhattan. Mohammed Mustafa. That's his name, Mohammed Mustafa. So he pays two hundred and eighty nine thousand bucks a year just to operate his his push hot dog cart. When you go to 62nd and 5th Avenue next time, and you wonder why the hot dog cart's charging at $6 for a bottle of Poland Spring, now you know why. <laughs> I swear to God, when I take my kids to the park, I'm always, bre- like you, I always carry the big pocketbook. You know, when you're a mother, you need the big pocketbook. I mean, I have a big pocketbook. I take it to the movies. I put the, I do microwave popcorn in my house, and I put it in my bag. I take it to the popcorn. I'm not, I am not buying these things. When we go out, I might as well be like a mini college dorm fridge. I have everything. Bottles of water, snacks, some sandwiches, bananas. Sometimes the bananas, half a banana shoved in a Ziploc. I don't care because, first of all, in the city, it's actually kind of easy, you know, buying your kids something if you're out because you're on foot. It's easy. You have to travel light. But the problem is the prices. In the suburbs, I feel like it's equally annoying because you got to stop somewhere. You got to drive and stop. Like you got to drive to Wawa, stop and park the car and go in and get, you know, a a Gatorade and and a a granola bar. Or you could go to the drive-thru, but that's, you know, just inconvenient. So anyway, I don't even buy any of these $5 waters from Muhammad Mustafa's cart outside. But if I did... I would probably vomit right after. That's my point. But that's the fact. $289,000. Let me tell you something, okay? When I was 23 years old, and and by the way, if you're a young girl listening to this, I think this is good advice. When I was 23 years old, I was in the city, and I saw an apartment for sale um, on the Upper East Side, and it was great. There was, there was lots of apartments. But there's always apartments for sale, but this one was $300,000, I remember. It was a studio apartment, and that's a lot of money for an apartment. It's a lot of money for a house, but in Manhattan, $300,000 Sounds like a good price. Not at 23 years old. So I was 23. I see this $300,000 studio apartment in the 60s. 
or Third Avenue. It was a really nice apartment. It was um, a big, huge square, like big, big square, which, you know, is, is nice. It wasn't like one of these weird railroad layouts. And when you walked in the front door, it had a really nice long hallway to get in. The hallway was maybe like 10 feet long. So you walk in the front door, long hallway, right? And then you, at the end of the hallway, is it opens up into this big square. Now, when you when you open up the front door and you're walking in, so right to the right had a coat closet. You take a few more steps, maybe like two feet from the front door. To the left had a little kitchen, a galley kitchen, separate from the big room. And then when you walked, you know, out of the kitchen and into the made the left and into the big room, you're in this big room with a couple of windows and nice closets. And um, and that was it. That was it. Three hundred thousand dollars. It was a nice doorman building. It was a condo, which is better to buy than a co-op. And if you ever want to talk and hear about why, why we could get into that another time. But um, and the maintenance was good because that's important in Manhattan. Because you know you're spending your money, your monthly, you have a monthly bill for maintenance. So anyway, get into the point. My boyfriend's always like, "You take so long to tell a story." I'm like, "You're a guy. Who cares?" Anyway, so uh, <laughs> so I, I I said to my girlfriends at the time, I had a house at the Jersey Shore. I said to my girlfriend. I found this apartment, three, you know, three hundred thousand dollars. I, I think I should get it. And and uh, one of the girls in the house, we weren't super close, but she was like, "Why would you ever buy an apartment? You're twenty three years old, and that just sounds so crazy." Now at the time, I was actually making okay money. I worked in advertising sales. My base salary was atrocious. It was nothing practically, but I made commission. I happened to be a good salesperson, you know, and um, and so I was saving my commission here and there. Now I didn't have three hundred thousand dollars, but maybe I had, I don't know, like. Twenty thousand dollars at tw- at twenty three years old. I felt like Daddy Warbucks. You know what I'm saying? So, I and I thought, well, the down payment is sixty thousand, and I have twenty thousand. And maybe if I, you know, like beg my grandma, who would never give it to me, or just work hard, hard, hard. I I don't know. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I just thought I wanted to try to get this apartment. I thought it was going to be a sound investment. Long story short. The girl was so convincing. She was just telling me why I don't need the apartment, how it's crazy of me, and what am I going to do in a couple of years if I meet somebody and get married and move out. Let me tell you something. I should have bought that damn apartment. First of all, it's the same card as this, it says Muhammad Mustafa's hot dog card on 62nd and 5th Avenue, okay? And now, well, not now in COVID time, but pre-COVID, it would have been worth probably like $500,000. So mini, mini, mini impromptu story, lesson for the young girls listening. If you have a, if you're a young Okay, like I'm talking like young, young. I, I, I'm still young, by the by. But if you have an opportunity to buy something, in my opinion, just buy it. Like, don't wait for a guy. I, I, I'm really serious. Don't wait for a guy, and don't listen to any of your friends because you know, at the end of the day, sometimes I think you, you learn as you as, as you get older. People just want to keep you down. Now, I don't think this girl in my summer house wanted to keep me down, like, you know, in a negative way. I just thought she genuinely thought, why would you buy this apartment? Why would you spend this kind of money? It makes no sense. You know, first of all, it's an exorbitant amount of money, a lease. Two, you're 23 years old. Three, what kind of money you have? And of course, like she's asking what kind of money I have because I don't even know what she had. She probably worked. She probably not working, living in our mother's basement. You know what I'm saying? But I regret that. I do regret it because um, I went on to renting and yada, yada. After you rent for so long, you just, you know, when you look back, you're like, ugh. Anyway, but that's the fact of the day. How about that? The longest fact of the day ever. So, how are you? Episode 39. We are one episode away from season two, baby. Episode 40 is going to be season two. I don't even know how long seasons are. Is that not ridiculous? Is that not ridiculous? So, let me tell you, I had this idea. Let me run this by you, okay? Tell me what you think. I, like, and, and by the way, I really appreciate when I talk about things on here and then you, you DM me on Instagram or TikTok because I feel like it's a, I do <laughs> really do feel like it's a real conversation. And I don't know about you, but I'm seriously desperate for like just girlfriend time because because I I mean I I I went out with a friend for a cocktail. My friend Nick, I I posted on a thing. We were at a bar on the Upper East Side. We went out for a cocktail. It was fun. But that doesn't ha- that's not happening that often. And I don't want to go out with just anybody. Even though I have friends in the city, of course, I have lots of friends. I don't want to go out with just anybody because I don't want to mix around with the, the, you know, with the virus and stuff. Anyway, 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 anyway. Okay, so um, I, this is what I want to ask you. Um, you know what I thought? Some, you know, so I'm getting, so you, so you're going you know, to, you girls, you're, you're, you're emailing me, you know, messaging me and you're like, oh, when's the next episode or oh, whatever. And I love doing this and I'm, and you love to listen because who doesn't love to listen? Because I'm a normal girl talking about normal things like buying picture frames at Walmart for $1.29 and I'm not talking about things that are so out of reach. You know, isn't that the problem? Isn't that the problem? I feel like when you go on social media 
or um, or you listen, or you watch Bravo or E or whatever, you know, or like Real Housewives of Kardashians. I love all those shows, but er- everything that everybody does is so damn expensive. Every I'm, I, I, everything is out of reach, and I sit there. I'm I'm in front of my television in the living room in my feety pajamas, and I'm just like. Where do these people get their money from? And, and I'm sure you think the same thing. I listen to podcasts. I listen. I read magazines. I I, I I open up, you know, Vanity Fan magazine. I look at the editor's picks list and things that millions of dollars. And I'm just like, who who has money for a leather trunk of eight thousand dollars? Where do these people live? Who are they marrying? Why aren't I in this utopian paradise anyway? So that's why I think that the podcast is doing well because we're normal girls talking about normal things. And sure, of course we love the occasional luxurious item and we do the splurge and everybody has their nice stuff that they like. But like, you know, c- come on. Anyway, so I had this idea. I don't know if I don't know if it's going to fly, but you know, mm, I think I'm going to pitch a radio station. Here's my thought. Um <clears throat> There are obviously AM, so, you know, first of all, there's FM and AM radio stations. I don't even know who listens to that anymore. Well, actually, I do because my car's 11 years old, so unless I plug in, you know, like do the cord into my phone to listen to a podcast, which I do, but uh, if I don't, if my phone's dead is what I'm saying, basically, because of course the court, God forbid the court charged the phone plus to listen to the podcast, you know, Um, I put on the radio. I've always liked AM radio because there's a there's a couple of shows. I don't know um, you girls out there if you're in the New York area, but there used to be a show you would know it if you, if you listen to AM. Joan Hamburg, and uh, and then also Arthur Schwartz Food Talk. You know these shows they they were two shows. Joan Hamburg might be on, but um, Arthur Schwartz Food Talk was a cooking show on AM radio when I was younger, and I used to listen to it. I loved it. He wrote a cookbook called Naples at Table, and Joan Hamburg. She just had like a little talk show. But the thing is, is that. AM radio is always horrible. Bloomberg news, sports, everything staticky, commercials that are, you know, ineligible. But I, is that even the word? That's not the word. You know, sometimes I think I just, words just zap out of my head. Anyway, and it's not illegible because I'll be right. Anyway, whatever. You couldn't listen to the commercials. So, <laughs> so um, but I like these two talk shows. And I thought to myself, you know, why isn't there, it, it, well, maybe there is. You tell me. Why isn't there a talk show on AM radio? For, for for the girls, for, for us women. I mean, you know, like, uh, not that you have to do things for, for girls and guys. No, what maybe I shouldn't say for girls. Why isn't there just, like, a modern woman or guy just having a talk show on the AM radio or FM radio? Now, I'm not necessarily saying that, like, you know, 10, 10 wins sort of thing. It could be on Sirius. And obviously that's when you then do cross over into podcast territory. But I do think there could be an uh, an opportunity. People still do listen to the radio. They still throw it on. Um, and, I, and I'm and i thinking about pick, pitching a radio station to say, how about the Le- Elise DeLucci show? I'm a business person. Um, I'm a comic. I have the podcast. Here's the following. Here are the comments on the podcast. People, people want to list, you know, whatever. And see what they say. Because to be honest, as much as I love my full-time job, you know, if I could get out of that, I would be happy one day. Now, I'm not burning bridges there. I'm not. I like it. And I'll, I I would never leave my full-time job. And you shouldn't either, by the way, for a passion project. I, you wouldn't. You should never leave it until you absolutely need to. Unless you need to. Have to. But, um... But I think that that's uh, something that I'm going to do. I have all these things that I work on, obviously. But I do think the idea of uh, trying to pitch a station on, um, you know, picking up the show would be, would be good. Anywho, so let me know what you think about that. Um, so yeah, New York City snowstorm, right? It's great. It's, uh, you know, God forbid, God forbid, New York City gave the kids a, a, a snow day, a snow day, right? So, um, it's Tuesday right now. I usually record this on a Monday, but yesterday, Monday is, um, was the storm and, uh, the big storm. And, you know, ugh, the kids, now that we're virtual learning, you know, blended learning, remote learning, they didn't even get a snow day, at least in my school district up here on the Upper East Side. I'm, I'm just like, really? Like these kids, they, they've been so sad. They've been so miserable all, all year long. You're not even going to give the poor things a, a snow day, like a, a, a remote learning free day. I mean, I should post a video. You should have seen it. I'm sitting on the couch doing my work. I'm on conference calls. They're in the kitchen in front of their computers, staring out the window, at, at, like, at the snow, like, desperate to go out. <clears throat> They're trying to concentrate on school, which, you know, obviously wasn't working, because they're kids. They haven't even seen other kids, let alone play outside in the snow with other kids and the thing. Anyway, but, um, 
But you know what? It's so nice that it snowed. Well, I did wind up taking them out. Um, and, you know, we were in the park, and everybody was obviously super spread out, so they didn't have to wear their masks. And it was just fun. They were doing belly flops down the, down the you know, down the, um, down the, the, the hills or whatever. It was very fun. But anyway, if you have kids and, um, and you're doing this homeschooling business during this time and you're working, how the hell do you keep your kids out of your room, okay, or, or away from your working? I mean, you might live in a house. See, if you live in a house, all your problems are solved. Or, of course, if you live in, in an apartment and you have another bedroom or an office, whatever, then your problems are solved. I would die for an office. I would die for a room to do my work. It's so hard. Like right now, I'm literally, my, I'm sitting on my bed in my bedroom. Now, let me tell you something. I could have, I could have broadcast, I could record this podcast out so out one of the comedy clubs in New York. And I might wind up doing that when the world opens up because a lot of comedy clubs have podcast studios in there and they're fully equipped. I could go do that. But what's the point of doing it if I could do it at home? You know what I'm saying? But I like to do it in my living room. I like to have a cocktail, you know, the whole bit. Um, but today I'm in the bedroom and it's because I have to get away from the kids to do my own work so they can do this school. And I had to say, don't come in the room. I'd say, do not come in the room. If you come in the room, we're not going out to play later. You're not getting any dessert. There's no TV. And like you have a meatloaf every night for dinner for the rest of the week. Okay. <laughs> you know, my older one, she's so fancy. She's like, oh, mommy, I love meatloaf. I'm like, yeah, sure you do. <laughs> Anyway, GameStop and AMC, huh? How about that crazy stock market stuff? What's up with the platform shutting people down? You know, like, look, Twitter and um, and with, you know, with 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 our former president, Twitter and 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 um, you know, whatever, Facebook, all these Instagram, I don't even know, all the platforms shut, blocked him, shut him out. They didn't like what he was saying. Fine. I mean, I don't even know if it's fine. I don't. I don't get political anywhere. But what I will say is that. We have a First Amendment in this country of, of freedom of speech. And and when you are a tech company, as I work in the space, if you build a platform, you build the platform and you allow people to go and use it at, 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 at their discretion. I mean, do you? And I don't really know. I mean, you know, we all sign up for these things like Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, TikTok, and we all sign off on these big T's and C's. I have never obviously combed through the T's and C's, but does it say somewhere about guidelines of what to talk about, what not to talk about? Because... I thought that that, I don't know, <clears throat> I understand why they turned it off, but I don't really know what my personal opinion is in terms of, do I think it's right? Do I think it's right that you just go turn off or, you know, block the president, take him off, remove him from platforms? And this is like the same thing as GameStop and AMC in the stock market last week. So GameStop and AMC, two stocks, they went wild and Robinhood, TD Ameritrade, a couple other platforms, they just decided that it was too volatile. Too many of the hedge fund investors were shorting the stock, and they decided, well, we're going to restrict trade, restrict trading for our retail investors, which are people like you and me. If we want to invest, buy a couple shares, we were we wouldn't have been allowed to buy them because the because the platforms thought that they were too volatile, and you know, and this is exactly what 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 Twitter did, right? They thought, well, the person using our this one person that's using our platform is too volatile, and we're going to cancel him. Where's the line drawn? You know. Where is the line run? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. And and to be honest, I, I you know like I said, I'm 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 busy with the kids and 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 I and and with my working and I you know maybe maybe they talked about this on like the View and those kind of shows which I love, um, but I haven't had a chance to watch. So I don't know. I really don't know what I think about it. But but the stock market was wild last week. And you know the thing that um, is not good though about all that stuff is that it could seem tempting to you know put try to put some money in and say, oh, you know, everybody's doing this. I can make some money. But my God, you could really lose your shirt. You could really lose your shirt. I know somebody that um, it was very fortunate and made a ton of money uh, in the entertainment space, a ton. And um, they put their money in the market. Uh, and when the tech stocks, you know, when, when the, the tech bubble and it all and, and, and they lost it all, literally all like millions, millions. I mean, again, can you imagine how how sick are you? How sick are you? So while tempting, I don't know, worth it. Got to do your due diligence. Um, have you been watching TV? What have you been watching? I just finished The Crown on Netflix. So good. I finished all four, all four seasons. Um, it's at that part, you know, Diana and Charles, they're together and, and, and they're, they're having their issues, you know, and then there's that trollop, Camilla. But uh, so good. And, you know, it's like, 
what's up with you, Camilla? I mean, yeah, so he, Charles did wind up, Prince Charles really did wind up loving Camilla, right? I mean, he did uh, not wind up. He did love Camilla. He obviously loved her her whole life. They're, they're married now. You know, Diana passed away. They're married. But, I mean, what a troll up is she? Really? 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 You know, you would think if you didn't want to give the guy the time of day when he was actually single, you know, like, just, what are you going to do? Have your cake and eat it too? Go have your husband and, and, and be sleeping with Prince of, Prince of Wales, you know, throughout his whole marriage? Not that he's any better. I mean, no, come on, because he's, please. Anyway, mm. it's so good. I recommend it. And after The Crown, um, a bunch of people would tell me to watch The Queen's Gambit on Netflix. So I started watching that. And it's, um, and it's just so good. It was so good. I was hesitant to watch it because I was like, the Queen's Gambit. I just finished the crown. Cra- the crown. I finished the the crown about the Queen. I don't really know, but the Queen's Gambit is about. Um, if you haven't seen it, oh, it's so good. It's like it's that. It's just the kind of story that just makes you like be obsessed with the whole thing. I watched the whole uh, series in two days. It was. Um, it's about a girl who's an orphan. Her her mother dies. Her father is like estranged, abandoned her, whatever. Her mother passes away. And she gets put into an orphanage, and she's an orphan, and she be- and she becomes a chess prodigy. And the whole show is just showing her um, and her, you know, sort of orphan, her early orphan years, becoming this chess, learning chess. She learned chess from the janitor, learning the chess. I'm not doing any spoiler alerts. And then what happens throughout her life? Um, playing chess, and um, and and at the time, I think this was, I think it was set in the the fifties, the fifties, yeah, the fifties, and. Um, you know, chess, man's game, you know, and, and the Soviets, obviously, are, are chess champions, and just so good. It's that perfect mix of, like, poor girl that, you know, just is, just has, just so, so unfortunate, and then someone finds her, and she's like a diamond in the rough, and then grows into this, this, this wonderful thing, and um, you gotta watch that, the Queen's, the Queen's Gambit. If you hear any mumbling in the background, it might be two tiny British girls, okay, using the potty. Just, just an FYI. Anywho, um, so I was reading this article in the, in the newspaper, okay, and it's like Bridezilla, a whole new level. A whole new level of Bridezillas are out right now. I don't know if you know about this. You know, let me just say, these, there are brides out, well, right out of the gate. These brides, they want, they are saying to their guests, we want you to get the vaccine before you come to our wedding. If you want to come to our wedding, you got to get the vaccine. And it's like, made me think, how funny is, first we started with, you know, um, you know, in, 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 we started with these bridezillas, you know, in lieu of a gift, in lieu of a gift, you know, please make a donation too. And it's like, really, like, do we really have to do more extra work? Then of course there's the bridezillas that want to do the, the, the island, you know, the island bachelorette parties. Um, and I'm not saying that I probably wasn't one of them because for my bachelor party, when I was married, my first marriage, I, uh, not that I'm married again, but you know what I mean? I went to Miami, but my point is, is you know, and then there's the bridezills that do the destination wedding. I mean, it's just a nightmare, but it's like, and then on the donation note, it's like, what if I don't want to give you a, what if I don't want to make a donation in your name? What about, what if I want to give you cash? What if I want to give you cash? What if I don't want a record of how I spend my money? What if I want to give you a toaster? How about that? In the UK? They don't, they don't even give you cash. In my, I'm Italian, as you know, in my culture, we just give people cash, cash, check. And then there's a little satin bag in the corner, in the corner of the room at the weddings, you know, and you put, you just put the cash, you put the cash in there and you put the card with the check in there. In the UK, as I know from my ex, they don't even give cash. They, 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 they give gifts, toasters, you know, like champagne flutes, nothing wrong with that, different than my culture. But it's like, I imagine this, all these demands, you know. What the norms are now, though, on the invitation, not black tie preferred, black tie optional. No, it's vaccine mandatory. You know what? Please. I I, I can't. And by the way, what do you guys think about all-inclusive uh, weddings? What do you think about that? These wedding vacations, destination weddings. I don't know why the word's slipping from me. I, I'm not I'm not against them. I get it. I get why a couple would want to do it. Get away from everything. Have vacation. But what about the guests? What about the guests? If you're a, a woman and you you know you're a couple with the, you got a couple kids, you spend nine thousand dollars on an all inclusive wedding vacation where you're going to be trapped on a resort with family and strangers. Maybe you don't like your family. Maybe you don't want to go. <laughs> but now, right on the invitations, it's saying we kindly request that all of our guests get vaccinated. I mean, in the beginning, right? It's like 
wear a mask, social distance. Maybe if you want to attend our function, we're going to do social distancing. and You have to get a rapid COVID test. But now get a shot. If you don't get a shot, otherwise we're not going to grace you with our matrimonial presence. Give me a break. Who cares? How about, well, yeah, and by the way, first of all, what about people that are lying to you? What about the lie? Are you asking for proof? Are you asking for vaccination proof? Papers? <laughs> In your card, please put the please please put the documentation that you 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 you've received your vaccine. What about pe- what about the people that like cousin Stewart? Yeah, yeah, got the shot. Don't worry about it. <laughs> what about cousin Angelo? Yeah, whatever the shot. Don't, it's fine. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm good. You know what? I got the first one because I walked by the CBS. They happened to have extras. The second one, you know what? They, I, I'm good with fifty percent immunity. And you, come on, come on. I mean, just just just, just, just how about this? couple that's getting married a zoom wedding i know it's not it's not romantic or just keep it tiny you know i mean that's what it's about anyway i guess we just have to all mm, come to terms with the fact right now that life is different i keep thinking it's gonna get better you know i keep thinking like all my sentences start you know when the vaccine when, when i get the vaccine or when the shit's over it's like not over it it it's it, it, uh, so I guess, right, to, to couples, they're, uh, you know, people that are getting married, they, they they have to figure out ways of how they can have their wedding of their dreams with their family and friends in, in a safe way. In uh, my opinion, if I was getting married, I would probably have, you know, 20 people, you know, not, I don't even know, maybe not even, just immediate, like literally immediate family on both sides. And, um, and that was it. And I say immediate family. I'm talking about like my mother, my sister, you know, and whoever I was marrying, their parents, their, their siblings. And that's it, right? Um, and and maybe, maybe, maybe do, you know what? Maybe have somebody video the first dance, video the vow, you know, have the videographer, whatever people are calling it these days, and then send that out to your people, you know? I mean, because are people, are people really going to attend your wedding party from their living room? Like, what, everybody's going to get online and do the con? You're going to get online, you can do the conga line <laughs> with the wedding music blasting from your computer? Like, oh, yeah, there's Cousin Vicky on the line. Come on, let's get on. We'll go through the bathroom. It'll be good. <laughs> so crazy. Anyway, also, um, when I was reading this, like, and, and then I was I went over to the, 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 the vow section in the New York Times, I read this, just happened to catch my eye because it was said a comedian officiated. It was a couple, a fun, fun, like a, a seemingly fun couple. And, you know, they had their wedding right up and they were saying they're a comedian, a, their comedian friend officiated their wedding. And I, and I thought to myself, you know what? I'm a universal life minister. I am. I really am. A bunch of years ago, okay, I was working at this company. My boss at the time, his friend was getting married and said, I want you to officiate my wedding. And, you know, the guy's like, well, I'm, you know, I'm not a rabbi. I'm not a priest. He's like, no, become a universal life minister. You go to a website, you do it. Well, at the time, I was like, I want to do it. It was free. So I did it. So I am. I can actually officiate. You want me to officiate your wedding? I'm available. I just say, do you, Vito, take conchetta and sickness and in health and obsessive compulsive shopping and all she can eat binges? And then it's like, do you, conchetta, take Vito and sickness and in health? And it's his and in, and in his upcoming dry spell that'll last for eternity. And is sleeping on the couch with his hands down your pants. You do? Great. Fabulous. Anyway, let's have a cocktail. That that, that That's probably how I would officiate your wedding. Anyway. <laughs> I found a new product um, that I thought was adorable for our product review. Ginger June Candle Company. Ginger June Candle Company. Have you heard of these candles? There's all these like cute candle companies. I feel like they're popping up. Homesick, you know, that has the candles of the state. You know, candles that smell like New York, or whatever. But this this com- this company is cute. I just I don't know. I love like the I love the witticisms, like the things that are on the back of this vitamin water bottles. You know, I it really it really gets me going. I really really love it. So Ginger June Candle Company, they they hand pour these candles. Oh, I always read that on their website. Um, I saw them on Nordstrom. I was looking on uh I was looking for something on Nordstrom. They were twenty one bucks. Uh, and the, the on the candle, a couple of them said. Hey mom, hey mom, I forgive you for my 90s bangs. That's like one candle. Um, another candle said, hey mom, sorry about my teenage, teenage years. Another candle was like, you know, don't be a prick. I mean, cute, 21 bucks, so cute. I mean, you know, it's like, because if you, if you, it's Valentine's Day coming up, you know, so you gotta, I, mean, I don't know if you get your husband a gift or your boyfriend, but maybe you're married for 40 years and like you love each other, but you also kind of hate each other. You know, a card, a box of heart, Russell Stover and a candle that just says, don't be a prick. I feel like that that's the language of real love, you know? (laughs) 
Mm. 21 bucks. Ginger June candle. By the way, some of these sayings that I saw, they didn't, Nordstrom didn't carry them. I had a, I looked on their actual website. The Nordstrom ones was like, um, you are, you're my person or a cat's a cooler than people, which is still funny. And by the way, I'm sure you caught it. I'm saying Nordstrom's like, I mean, come on. So I'm so classy, right? What is, what's up with that? You know, like there's Macy's, there's JC Penney, Sears, Nordstrom. But for some people, people are like, I'm going to JC Penney's. I'm going to Penny's. Oh, I'm going, I got it at Nordstrom. Where'd you get it? I got it at Nordstrom's. Oh yeah. Oh, Nordstrom's. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's Nordstrom. I don't know why though, but you know what? I, I clearly embarrass myself wherever I go because that's how I pronounce these sort of names. Questions from the audience. Um, <clears throat> I posted a video on um, me living with this boyfriend when I was young. And by the way, when I was 20, uh, when I was 20 years old, I had a boy, I was in college. I had a boyfriend and, um, and he was older. He was maybe like seven, eight years older. And uh, my mom, my parents had gotten divorced a few years before and, um, my mom was dating and she, you know, and, and I was the oldest, I'm the oldest out of my sisters. And I just like, I, I mean, you know, not that my mom was bringing guys around the house. She, she didn't do anything like that, but you know, like she was just dating. I just felt it was weird. I was 20 years old. I was practically finished with college. I was, I was like literally gra- going to graduate and I met this guy and, um, and we were dating and uh, he was an Italian guy from Brooklyn, and he had an apartment. He's like, oh, you want to come live with me in my apartment? And, you know, at the time, I was like, yeah, sure. Like, you know, and I didn't pay rent and, you know, whatever. I didn't even know what that was like because I was living with my mom, and my mom didn't take, obviously, any rent from me. Well, not obviously. I shouldn't say obviously. She did not. But anyway, so I posted this video on TikTok about my experience, a sh- short experience about living with this guy. The guy, he worked at a bank. He was a successful guy. Uh, he had lots of friends. He was always the life of the party. He was a little chubby. He was cute, you know, but, but behind closed doors, he had a real, he was a real nasty son of a gun. He had issues, as everybody does. But like, I was a young girl. I just, you know, when I was living with him, he was my boyfriend and he wanted to get married. He would talk about getting married. He'd talk about getting, you know, blah, blah, whatever. Maybe he was 27, 28. That's a big age difference, 20 to 27, 20. But I turned 21. I graduated school, you know. I, uh, and I went to, I was at my first job and you know, when you're at your first job, you're just making whatever kind of salary, right? You make whatever sort of salary you're making. I was making no money. And, um, I don't even, actually, that's not even true. I was temping. I temped before I got my first job. So I was making, you know, whatever, 10 bucks an hour temping. Then I got my first job and it was that, that low salary job that I told you earlier. And uh, I was making commission, but you know, so I'm not making a lot of money, especially compared to my boyfriend who worked at a big bank. And he would say things like, you're not, what, like, what are you going to make? What kind of money are you really going to make? Come on, Elise, look at that. What are you making here? Like, come on, like, let's just, let's just buy a house in Staten Island. We'll get a multifamily. You, we'll rent out the bottom floor, the whatever. We'll take the top floor. And I, <clears throat> something inside me was just like, no. As tempting as he made it, I know, a multifamily in Staten Island, so tempting. It was just the idea of <clears throat> someone taking care of me. It was the idea of not having to think about work, uh, and, and, and money. And I was always crazy ambitious. I was the editor of the high, it's college newspaper. I was a food columnist in my high school newspaper. I was the editor of the poetry magazine in my high school. Newspaper. It's not that I wasn't ambitious. I, I went through a lot of stuff. 9-11 happened at that time. My parents got divorced. They had a miserable divorce. It was very, <clears throat> it was terrible. My father left. <clears throat> so this guy coming in my life, excuse me, I just felt like, oh my God, this could be my ticket out. And, um, and I didn't, but, and I loved him. I did. I loved him. And I, and I looked up to him in some ways because he was older and successful and he was also Italian and he did, you know, and whatever, he had his own stuff he went through. But I left that motherfucker because he was so nasty. He was so nasty behind closed doors. He would say just the, the God, most God awful things to me. And, and, um, you know, and, and then, and he wound up getting diabetes and I wound up like, you know, I, I'd have to like, that was the whole thing, you know, it was like what he could eat, what he couldn't eat. And not that I would ever consider leaving somebody if they got sick. That had nothing really to do with it. But it was just like on top of the fact that you're such a nasty son of a gun. You're sick and you got this other stuff going on and you, you, you all of your mental stuff. And everybody on the outside thought it was normal and the life of the party. Meanwhile, we'd be at New Year's parties together. Clock would strike, strike, strike 12 and I'd be looking for a little smoocheroo and he, the guy would disappear. I mean, really? And I was eight years younger. You don't deserve me, pal. So anyway. I post this video on TikTok and, uh, and this girl, she, she wrote, um, and I hope you're listening. I'll tell you that I answered. She said in the uh, comment, 
you know, what do you, what, like, what should she do? She said, Ma, I'm dating this guy. And he gave, this is what she said. He gave me, not asked me a break from the relationship, but I realized I want him back. Do I tell him? Uh, sorry, but I realize I don't. Let me do this again. She's dating this guy. He gave me, not asked me, a break from the relationship. But I realized I don't want him back. Do I tell him or do I just keep a forever, air quotes, break? Let me tell you something. Okay. The girl's name is um, Astrid. Astrid, dollface. I don't even know what that means. Somebody gave you a break and not asked you. Like, let me guess this straight. So you're going out on dates with this guy. Let me just be clear about this. You're going out on dates with this guy. How long are you dating him? A month? Because if he's dating you a month and he just disappears, I think that's ghosting, which is still disgusting behavior and I would never talk to him again. That's my own personal opinion. But what? If you're dating for three months, six months, you're going around with this guy, you're giving him your time, you're doing your makeup, you're looking good when you go out, whatever, you're, you're, you're breathing, you're sharing the same air, you're giving him your, your precious breath, and then he decides uh, that you, that he's just going to, what, disappear and take a break? Did he? Did, what did he do? Did he fall off the face of the earth? Is, is, is he doing a ghosting thing? Or, or how did you find out that it was a break? Did he go on Instagram and say, like, me and my girlfriend took a break and you, you were the last to find out? Let me tell you something. I would not give that mf -er, not a minute more of my time. For, and because he, let's say, he gave you a break, whatever that means, and he's ex and he would be potentially expecting you to come back. He doesn't deserve you. Are you kidding me? You leave his ass. Oh, my God. So, of course, when I read your comment, Ashton, I was on the couch with my boyfriend. I turned to my boyfriend, and I said to him, let me tell you the situation. Give me your guy opinion. And he goes... Listen, listen to what, listen to what my boyfriend says. This is, this is why we, this is why I can't deal with guys sometimes. He goes, well, well, Lise, <laughs> well, Lise, um, you can't really judge why he asked for the break. You know, it could be for many reasons. Sometimes people just need breaks. It's for many reasons. I said to him, what kind of lawyer answer is that? I'm done with you. I'm done with you. Go home. <laughs> go home. I said, go, go home. I said, because they, they, why? I said, you know, are you listening? And then I realized he wasn't even listening. The whole question. I said, are you listening to this? He just decided they were going to go on a break. He was decided. He didn't tell her. And she's now thinking, should I, should I like let him know that, that like I'm not interested in you anymore because you hurt my feelings or should I just like disappear and, you know, whatever, do a forever break? I'm like, are you, you know, and he's like, oh, you, you can't really like justify why somebody needs a break. What if something happened to him? What if he's having trouble? What I said to him, you know what? Well, Astra doesn't freaking deserve, doesn't deserve to be with somebody that doesn't want to have the decency to tell her I'm going through something and I need to take a short hiatus, an intermezzo, an intermission, a break, a bath and break between the appetizer and the main course. And guess what? Guess what? If he does, if he even did tell her and he was rude, I said to my boyfriend, God, you know how many men there are? I don't care that there's a big, there's a man shortage in Manhattan. There's a lot more women than men. I think there's like, twice or three times the amount of women in Manhattan as they brought to men. I told him, I said, this is ridiculous. So Astrid, doll, if you're listening to this, look, me, I would probably call, if you're asking what I would do, I would probably call him up and I would probably be like, how dare you? You know, you think you're going to give me a break? Pfft, I'm giving you a break. Forget it. And then cut him off. <laughs> Change my number. But, or, if you don't want to be aggressive like that, I would just never talk to him again. Just literally never talk to him. Block him on all your social media. That sometimes people think that's petty, and I sometimes think that too. Blocking on social media is a little petty, but that's what you got to do. Block them on social media. Go on Match.com. Go on Tinder. Go on Hinge, Bumble, aka Crumble. I had the worst luck on there. Um, go find yourself a distraction. And if you realized that you don't want to be with him for whatever the reason is that you don't want you, you know you, you don't really you don't really want him back anyway. Good for you. Maybe then you don't need a distraction. I'm pathetic. I usually like distractions. You know, I like to keep my mind. <laughs> Occupied, because I'll be sitting in my room. Why? Why well, call all my friends? But why? Do they, why? I don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> but you're a better woman than me, Astrid. You don't want his ass back, and you shouldn't be taking it back. So I would be done with him, and that is my thought on that. Closing that with a quote of the day from my girl J Lo from the Bronx: "Doubt is a killer. You have to just know who you are and what you stand for, and that's it." J Lo. Thanks for listening to the Elise DeLucci Show. As always, make sure you subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts. We're on Spotify. Tell your friends. Trying to grow the, the listenership. I was going to say viewership. Listenership. 
Follow me on Facebook. Uh, sorry, Instagram. Sorry, I'm just so crazy with this Facebook today. I don't know why. I'm not big on Facebook. I don't use Facebook that much. I check it, not a lot. Um, Instagram, Instagram, at Elise DeLucci, or TikTok, at Elise DeLucci, or you can email me at Elise Comedy at gmail.com. Talk to you soon. Bye.